Hey everybody, it's Yvonne here with Back to Earth Creations and today I wanted to show you all how I make hand painted dragon eyes for use in um, all sorts of different projects from wire wrapping to setting in chain mail and leather working and I use them for everything from jewelry to costumes to like um, journal covers. It's really with these techniques that I'm going to be showing you guys, your creativity is the only limit for the application of these. So let's get started. So here we're going to be looking at and talking about um, the different kinds of like just clear cabochons that you can get. Um, I highly recommend using glass as opposed to an, an acrylic or plastic eye because um, some of the plastics will melt whenever you put the nail polish on the back like the acrylic re responds poorly. And then also over the years the acrylic or cast resin eyes will start to yellow and cloud and discolor whereas with using a high quality glass like this um, you don't have to worry about running into that as much and you really want to get a nice you know wet metallic shining you know real looking eyes as cool as you can get it to look because I mean if you're putting in the effort and stuff it may as well be you know, awesome looking <laughs> um, also, I feel like there are, you know, you can print off eyes and glue them to the back backs of cabochons, but this is just what the camera's picking up, but the, the illuminescence and metallic sheen and glittering wet, just cool look that you get on these eyes, you can't get that with printed, even with the photo paper. Um, it, it lacks a certain depth that I think painting gives it and you run into the risk of you know your stuff looking just like everybody else's and if you're like me and you go to different events and you s sell your creations um, if the person next to you is also selling dragon eyes and they printed off the same dragon eyes as you then people are going to notice you know whereas if you paint your own even you know with me teaching y'all my exact techniques and I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly what I do for the eyes that we sell out of our booth. Your eyes will still come out different from mine. Each one is a unique creation and an expression of the artist who makes them. So, you know, it lets us all put our own unique flair and spin on what we're doing. Now, as far as glass cabochons go, um, you can, you know, uh, there's a lot of good retailers and resellers on like uh, Etsy and eBay. And, you know, it's just find somebody that you like they're all pretty much consistent for the most part um and then these were what I used to use whenever I first started painting eyes oops and they are just clear fish tank glass like you can get them at like the floral section of Hobby Lobby or Michaels or even Walmart but you can see the difference both of these are roughly about 20 millimeter the the glass cabochons are calibrated so each one is this size and this thickness the fish tank glass is not perfectly circle, <laughs> is not evenly thick, and is not the same size piece to piece. So even though you're paying less for the fish tank glass, um, you're just not getting the same effect. And like, check out like the back has all this texturing on it, whereas the backs of these cabochons are smooth, and that gives you a much cleaner translation whenever the eye is showing through into the front. And so, I mean, for the longest time I used these because it's what I had and people still liked them and they were very well received, but it was a true leveling up in craftsmanship to use the, um, the calibrated flat backed cabochons. So now we're going to talk a little bit more, let me get this stuff out of the way, about, um, the process you know how do we actually paint the eyes and you kind of paint them in reverse like you'll paint the pupil first and then build forward from that and you're gonna paint on the back of the eye now I have my surface here that's actually just a picture frame I use this a lot in polymer clay that has a piece of graph paper laid underneath the glass but I do this that way I can line up my eye and kind of get things centered and parallel and um, it's not as important on the perfectly round eyes 
but on the ones that are oval shaped it really does help to kind of you know, line everything up and that way I can make sure the pupils are centered. Okay, so uh, I have my nail polish here. I have a black gel. Um, I really, you know, just use whatever you have on hand, but I like the different consistencies. I use a lot of different brands. Um, you know, but if I can get them for inexpensive and big bottles of them, then uh, that pleases me immensely. So for today's colors, I'm actually going to be using a pretty broad variety. And I'm going to go through in two separate layers. I'm going to do an initial layer with the black to do the pupil and an edging. And then I'm going to go through with my first set of four colors and then do the scratching and detailing. And then I'm going to go through with a second set of colors, then do another layer of scratching and detailing. And then I'm going to go through with this very bright fluorescent, uh, like neon pale orange. I'm not entirely sure. Um, like it's like a neon mango almost. Um, and that's something that I do like about the nail polish it is it does enable me to incorporate fluorescent colors that way the eyes will re will react under a black light so the next step here guys is to just get started <laughs> so this is very exciting this is something that I've been painting eyes for three or four years now you know doing all of my own eyes and we started getting into this because um, I didn't have any money for materials and we had some shows coming up and all I had on hand was uh, some spray paint and nail polish and clear glass cabochons from like Fire Mountain Gems which at the time were not calibrated so each one was a different size a little bit. Now here the tools that I'm going to be using for detailing and texturing and you can find something similar you know of similar concept for use for yourself but I have one of my metal leather awls with a very nice pointed tip on it and then this is actually a walnut hollow wood carving tool that it's just a flat chisel edge blade and the way that I'm going to be painting the pupil is I'm gonna go ahead and open up that nail polish and using just the tip of my awl or stylus glob a little bit of the paint on there and just start laying down the design. Now with this being a larger eye, I'm actually going to have a little bit of leeway to glob some paint on. But on some of the smaller eyes, I would just use the point because, you know, I don't want to risk, you know, on a cabochon on this size, you know, one of the 12 millimeter ones, I, that size of pupil would completely take it over. But while this is still nice and wet, I'm just going to stack some nice globs of uh, nail polish. And then using the grid work underneath, I'm actually going to start just pulling the uh, the nail polish to give it this feathered edge and this is another instance where your own creativity can come through if you wanted to do like a um, toothless from how to train your dragon we would do like a very large solid edge just deep black eye but I want something a little bit more reptilian and like dragon so Considering dragons are creatures of fantasy, I can make it look however I want. <laughs> it's the privilege of the artist. And so, just kind of... You know, and you can, you can see here how it's kind of stacked up. I pull from that pile of enamel.
And with this, I mean, the more feathering and layering and detail you can get, the better. Because it's really going to add some serious dimension to your final piece. And you don't want it to look like something, especially using inexpensive materials like nail polish. There's a perceived value about that. You know, you don't want people to see it and be like, well, that's obviously nail polish. And, well, you know, well, I could do that. And it's like, well, yes, being able to do it doesn't diminish it. But if you're selling your product, you know, you want it, you want it to be impressive. And what makes it impressive is what you put into it. I'm going to fill in those scratches that were left behind. And so here we have the back of our pupil so far. I'm going to pull it down a little bit sharper on the tips. And this is something that, I mean, you could do inlays if you wanted multiple colors inside the pupil. You could use like blacks and like blend in some different purple pigments or some, you know, like a little piece of glitter or something to give it like a white spot, like make it more of a like a chibi anime eye or something. But now you can see it from the other side. That's the pupil so far. And it's looking a little flat along the edge right down there. I'm going to clean the excess off my tip and I'm going to feather a little bit more. And I say this so much, but I can't say it enough. The magic happens in the details. You know, it's what's going to give this final piece character and depth and interest. So there we go, there's our pupil. And now, a, a lot of what I'm trying to show you and teach you here is more technique and concept than anything. So if you don't have the same batch of colors as what I'm going through, don't worry about it. You know, I, I'm doing a very fiery eye. Like I'm going for um, a little bit more of like a Eye of Mordor, you know, Eye of Sauron kind of kind of thing so but I've done these and here's a, an example of a finished piece that I've wire wrapped that this one's done up in a different style but more in a different color scheme too so you know take these techniques that I'm teaching you and come up with something that pleases you as an individual and as an artist so now I've got I've submerged my brush and wiped the excess off the side and you can see here I've got the enamel piled up on this side of the brush so on the bare side of the brush facing down I'm going to come through and just kind of lightly feather around the edges kind of continuing all the way around and as it uses up on the brush you can see it's kind of shaping it a little differently I'll just keep continuing around to where there's more enamel and then you can build up on the previous layers because the nail polish is really good about sticking to itself you know and so it'll build up and get thicker where there was some, um, and then be thinner where there's just glass with no enamel on it. I'm going to pull some a little farther in, and now my brush is naked, so I'm going to get a little bit more. And again, just feathering being however consistent or inconsistent as you like. I just wanted to get a little bit of the black flecking, like little black flecks, um, towards the iris, or the pupil for painting the iris. <laughs> okay, and so there we have a nice feathered edge what it looks like 
from the front. And also never be afraid to check your work as you go along. Okay, and so from here, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this next layer with a very nice metallic red. This is Color Cover Girl. Um, Forever Festive, maybe that's the color. I don't know, brilliant, deep, true looking red, like not orangey at all. Some nice copper, Sally Henson copper. Um, pure ice, hot tamale. And this is actually, this was clear. It was a clear coat or a yellow, I can't remember, but I mixed in some Pearl X pigment powder to give me a little bit more of a yellow gold. So I'm gonna go through with these four colors. But before I do my next color of the red, I'm gonna go through with my all. And I'm just kinda of scratch. You know, this has had a minute to dry so the paint's not completely wet. And you'll notice that as it pulls some down off the edge, it also redeposits here. So I'm trying to be pretty consistent about how far in I come from the edge. That way it's giving me like a secondary ring. And I'm doing straight lines, but you could do zigzags, you could do little circle swirls. Um, I've done a couple of eyes where I've added in some very strategically placed polka dots <laughs> that made it look pretty cool. So there's that. And here's it from the front. So you see how that gave us a layer of like freckling there in from the eye. And then I'm going to clean the excess off the tip. Now it's at this point I'm actually going to grab some paper towels. Okay, paper towels or fancy smancy toilet paper. Um, and this is gonna be for wiping the excess paint off onto. So we've got our red, make sure they're nice and blended, that way your pigment is evenly distributed. And then wipe the excess off the edge, again, like before. And I'm gonna go through and start just feathering around the edge. And now you'll see here, I've got like a glob coming down from that was on the, the stem of the brush. So you'll want to wipe that off, that way you don't get a big glob. It looks like I'm kind of running out. So I'm going to re-deposit some on my brush. <clears throat> I'm just kind of feathering and bringing it down to the edge. So there we are, just feathered right on out to the edge. And I'm going to check it from the front side and see how we like the way that looks. It's kind of a very minimal red edging. I think I'm going to add a little bit more for it to show through the black more. And so much of this is, you know, your personal taste and your style. You know, if you want something that is more simplistic or if you want something that, like this one here I'm working on is a very, this is going to be a very detailed eye. Most of the eyes that I do are not going to have this layer of detailing most of the time because they're not this large. So a lot of it would, you know, be lost on such a tiny piece. Like if I were doing a 12 millimeter eye. Okay, so now check that out. Pretty pleased with that. And I'm going to do a layer of the copper now. Hmm. Now I haven't been able to find glass cabochons that are larger than 50 millimeter. And complimentary dog hair. I'm going to remove <laughs> from my brush. In this one, I'm trying to do longer, broader strokes. It's going to build up very easily onto the uh, 
<clears throat> the enamel that's already layered onto the eye. Basically used up what was on my brush, so I'm going to redeposit. check that from the front pretty cool looking so far I think now I'm gonna put the cap back on this copper and I'm actually going to do a layer of scratching with this tool now the scratching that you get from the pointed tip of the awl is different from the scratching that you get from the squared off corner of the carving tool and so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to come through, put the point on the edge of the eye, and just scrape. And again, this is redepositing a layer of the enamel up there around the edge of the eye. If you don't want this to happen, you can wait a little longer and let the enamel dry more or you could wipe your brush in or not your brush your uh, blade in between to remove all that enamel but let's check that out that's pretty cool and that opens us up a nice background for coming through and adding some of this hot tamale orange And I accidentally dropped a little glob there on the back of the eye, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come through and just dab it. Because you want to be careful because I'm layering your enamel can re-wet the enamel underneath it. And then you can end up with smearing your pupil. And most of the time you want to avoid that because you already put a bunch of work into the pupil. You don't want it just getting basically muddied up and erased. but I'm gonna fill in a little bit with this orange. So there we go. And I left a nice little gap here in between, so we can check that from the front. That, that already looks mega cool, y'all, doesn't it? Oh, so pretty, okay. And so now, close the cap up on that. I'm going to go through okay, so again. I'm back. I had to take a minute because my camera died, but that gave me a perfect opportunity for the eye that we've been working on to dry all the way. So here you can really see just the way that those colors blend and reflect all the way around I mean that's really nice and so far I've only done four colors including the you know uh, three colors and then black I guess and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through in texture around the iris I don't know why I keep saying that I'm working on the iris I'm texturing around the pupil <laughs> sorry words are hard and so what I'm doing is I'm actually coming in pretty close to the black edge of the pupil, sometimes dragging parts of it out, um, and then just kind of cutting right on through this way. You know, kind of um, building a gradiated effect to where it's palest or most scraped towards the center of the eye and less scraped as you work your way out. And by waiting for it to dry like this, I don't have to worry too much about um, muddying anything up. Because it would give me um, a more of blurred, blended effect if I were doing this while the enamel was still wet.
So just kind of coming through, blending that out, getting that scraped off paint out of the way. So here you can see now the effect that that had. Now on this side, it's a little clearer than on this side, but that's fine because, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. So now what I'm going to do, once I get happy <laughs> with this side, is I'm going to go through with the lighter colored that I'd blended out of the, uh, I think, I think this was yellow because it was, excuse me, was, I don't know, was the color I started with. And then I added in the gold pearl X. Let me see if I can get the cap off. Oh, there it goes. Um, and I'm just going to fill in. I'm going to get a whole lot onto the brush. And then I'm going to fill in on the back here. Now, uh, you could also use acrylic paint. But it, from to me, even the metallic acrylics just weren't quite as glossy and wet and just cool looking as uh, what I was able to find in the nail polish. But you might have a different experience with it than I do, so by all means, don't you know? Don't hesitate to uh, experiment and live a little and grow as an artist and learn something new. <laughs> so, also, I really like that with the nail polish, each bottle contains its own brush because this way I don't have to spend any time cleaning brushes. Or messing up perfectly decent, you know, traditional medium brushes by gunking them up with a bunch of nail polish. Now this right here could very well be a finished eye. I mean, that's pretty cool looking. So you could stop here if you wanted. But I'm going to take it a couple steps further. Oh, that's so pretty though, you guys. And add in a whole nother layer of colors. And so I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to pull, I want some nice wide stripes coming out of this. So I'm going to use my um, chisel tip while it's still very much wet. And I'm just scraping. Now I'm going to come through and keep, you know, about every sixth of the, you know, so far around, I'm going to scrape off my excess. That way I don't get too much contamination and buildup. But what this is doing here is this is actually going to be blending out my under colors a little bit. And this is going to open it up for so much more depth. Because also, as you see, as it comes through in builds, it's, you know, these layers that you're seeing, it's actually getting a third dimension from where it's stacking on itself. And that's going to translate very subtly into the eye. Now, you can see here, I've got, I want to give it a little bit more intricacy there around the iris. Ah, pupil, please forgive me. It's only my mother tongue. I've only been speaking it my whole life. You know, there's no reason to expect that I'd be, you know, competent at it. Um, <laughs> so I'm coming through with my all tip and blending out the edge. So, so much of what I do whenever I paint eyes is I'm actually painting more by removing than I am. And don't worry if you get some nail polish on the front, you'll be able to clean all that up post-production. <laughs> But yeah, that scratching around the uh, pupil gave it the effect that I want. 
this down. I'm also going to go through and scrape a little deeper on the edges. You can see, I mean, it removes very little at a time, but it really starts to add up. There we are. So pretty. I'd be like, Mr. Sauron, you have such pretty eyes. Please don't kill me. <laughs> so now I'm coming through with, what color is this? Rogue red, rouge red maybe? Depending on the pronunciation, but it's a nice vibrant orangey red with like a gold glitter sheen to it. So let's shake that up. Go ahead and take the cap off. And I'm gonna start. Now, instead of just feathering gently on the edges, here I'm actually making an effort to layer it into those grooves that I've been making. And so you can be, you can make the edge consistent in width all the way around, or you could, you know, bring it in further in places and shallower in places and give it a nice, like, kind of waved effect. You know, the nice thing about these is with them being hand painted, you know, you don't have to stick to a certain. Well, I did this, unless you're making earrings and you want them to be like a matching set, you don't have to be very strict and specific about what colors you're placing where. So that gave it, I mean, a really slight pop there at the edges. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to go through with Bite Me, a gold shake that up nicely so that your pigments are nice and distributed also not all glitter polishes are created equal a lot of them will be almost a clear polish with a colored glitter suspended in them and then some of them are like this one where yes it's glittery but it's a very fine glitter um, and so it has a metallic sheen and it's suspended in an enamel that gives it a denser color. I'm always a little disappointed in the ones that have a very chunky glitter and a clear um, uh, suspension enamel. Like the base color is clear and then it just gets a color. Blah, 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 blah. It gets its color from the uh, from the glitter. You know, those can look great on your nails if that's what you're going for but I personally have been disappointed in them for our eyes. So there's a little bit more gold into the edges. So pretty. And so now I'm going to just pull my lines through some more. And this one, I'm leaving it globbed up on the tip. That way it will redeposit as it comes through. Because I do want more of that freckling effect. Just all the way around. All that build up, I'm going to wipe off onto my tissue. And there we go. And now I'm going to go through with now this one you can tell it kind of needs it needs mixed I hate it when they don't put um, a little zinc ball in there 
this one I'm just gonna lighten it up around the center just a bit just a hair see this is one where the liquid itself is very clear but it has a fine glitter suspended in it and these are great for having a color show through the back some neon orange and now with that first layer that I did nice and thick around the pupil this is going to blend out just a little bit I mean you know you don't have to do so many layers I just wanted to show you guys some of the different ways that I've gone about it and you know, what it looks like because you know this way you can get an idea of how it might look before you put on all the time and effort and decide you know I really put on eight more coats than what I needed to or you can decide man I really you know want that effect so I'm gonna invest and get all the different colors and you know really apply myself and do it this way so pretty and so now we could leave it like this and I'm not gonna lie guys I'm sorely tempted to but I want this one to be just a little bit more fluorescent because I'm going to use this eye as part of a costume and so, and also, if the tip of your awl starts getting messy, I just come through with my chisel tip and scrape off all that dried buildup and tissue scuzz and different things. So I'm going to come through just on the edge of where my iris is. Okay, so there I've done a little bit of a pattern and I'm going to fill it in. This is it before putting in the lightest color and I'm going to put this stuff on really thick and then I'm going to let it dry. Now an eye like this, if you're going to be wire wrapping it, with as thickly as I'm painting on the enamel, I personally would wait about two days to let it cure fully. That way you don't have to worry as much about the back scratching up. And actually what I would do, for me personally, um, and I would recommend this to you, because you don't want to put in all this, all of this effort on this eye just to have it get scratched or gouged or something through your wire wrapping. Um, is I would let it dry for two days and then I would put a layer of Mod Podge doming resin this stuff dimensional magic I would put a layer of that over the back and then let that cure all day until it's nice and hard and that way you don't have to worry about your eyes scratching up now check that out guys er my gird that is so pretty is gonna have such a nice fluoresce to it. The way that the light glints off of those metallic tones. I'm I'm really proud of this. <laughs> like this is one of the best eyes I've done in a while. And the effect that it has from farther back too. Very striking very alive. So now I'm going to let this dry 
for probably the next 30 minutes and then I'm going to put a thick coat of black over the back and then I'm gonna let it cure for the next day or two and put a layer of the Mod Podge doming resin or dimensional magic over it uh, and then this one in particular I think I might actually set in chain mail and have be or wrap in leather to have be the centerpiece of like a breastplate or a belt but thank you guys for following along with this video and letting me share this technique with you I would love to see what y'all create oh look at that the light coming through it oh it's so pretty <laughs> sorry it's, it's these moments of pride and revelry that I like to um to try to cherish because so much of the time as an artist and I'm sure y'all can relate you'll finish something and be like I hate it I hate everything I'm gonna set it on fire <laughs> and so in the rare instance that something does come out just spot on it's really great now also I want to show you you can take your chisel and be careful to not scratch up the front or to drop it but you can actually as that polish dries you can just go through and scrape it right off of the front I need to dry a little longer before I can take it and then buff it up the rest of the way but you just want to be careful that you don't scratch your polish on but there you go guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions ideas or comments leave them below or send me a private message and happy crafting y'all I hope you have a beautiful day